Maybe lock them doors and turn them lights down low. Put some music on that's soft and slow. Baby, we ain't got no place to go. <laughs> I hope you understand. There we go. That was good. That was great, Emerson. <laughs> Honestly, that was great, man. It's like one of the few country songs I know. Yeah. One of the few. But actually, yeah. I've been listening to Stapleton quite a bit, man. Yeah, Chris Stapleton's good. Yeah, it's like he's, he's got just a certain kind of style <laughs> that's kind of appealing to me, man. So thank you. Thank yeah. you very much for opening the show that way. I know it's always nerve-wracking for the guests. Yeah, especially when it's your first podcast. And then, hey, you got to sing a song for us. But I, I tell everybody, listen, even myself, I had to do it, and I did not do a good job of uh, Queen and uh, Under Pressure. Yeah. <laughs> I did not do a good job, but that's just how it is. So, Emerson, welcome to the show, man. Thank you. Thanks for having Thanks so me. much, man, Appreciate for coming it. to the show. Uh, kind of a, uh, sort of like a last-minute kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I reached out a little while ago just because I... Um, I, I know a bunch of people who follow the show and then just so through scrolling through my feed every now and then I'll I'll see it pop up quite a bit. Um and then I think for my first DM there I said I don't even know if you guys are in Canada or not. Yeah. But you know, if you're ever looking for more people, I'd love to, you know, come meet you guys. Oh, we're in Canada. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're in yeah. we're in Toronto. Well, just outside of Toronto. So no, it's, I'm always yeah. open to anybody reaching out to and, and then I'll reach back to them and talk to them and go, Hey, here you go. So I wanna welcome you to the show. So it's it's Brendan, right? Breden. Breden, sorry, Breden. Yeah. Breden Brothers Inc. And uh, Instagram is uh, at Breden Brothers. And then cell phone is 705-571-7373. Website is www.bredenbrothers.ca. Yep. And it's off mic, you were saying it's yourself and your younger brother? Yeah, so that's like where, well, so the story with Breden Brothers, the name is, I was starting a company, so I had to get a name. Um, but he wasn't, he, he's in carpentry, uh, but he wasn't, a part of the company yet it was it was probably like a year into it um and i probably had four or five guys at that point um until i actually convinced him to come on so until that point he probably thought it was just, just thought it was a bit of a joke or something how much younger know. is he uh just like a year and a half or okay. a year but yeah there's, you were saying there was four? yeah so there's four of us total okay. uh, so i got an older brother myself younger brother and then younger brother no sisters old sisters the oldest yeah. ah yeah. so she keeps you in line uh, i don't know i just, <laughs> Yeah, she doesn't. She doesn't say too much to us. <laughs> well, I, it's it's starting to get there now as people get relationships and get older and all that. But it was it was never that way when you grow up. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, welcome to the show. Appreciate yeah. you being on the show. And I want to first say that you you brought me a little gift here, man. Yeah, absolutely. You want to share what uh, what you brought there? What interesting bottle you brought there? That well, I don't know too much about whiskey. I just know it's a, a nice little gift. I just like the aroma. Bring, Sometimes so. I like the aroma, and I just like sensing it. That's all it is. Yeah, so it's nice yeah. to actually have some alcohol on the yeah. show, and it's. I could read what's on the yeah, bottle. Yeah, yeah, please. Or even grab the I bottle would. if you can. <laughs> hold it, and Angelina can actually be on the on the cut there. And she Which just, way am I holding it? This way towards this camera here. Okay, yeah. I could read the bottle, but I have no idea really what it is. So It is tastes nice no to bottle? me. That's all I know. So thank you very much. Yeah, I appreciate absolutely. it. So uh, I, I know that you've got an interesting story, uh, how you got started. And I guess I, I ask a lot of people that come on the show, is like, why construction? Mm -hmm. Is there construction in your family? No. You're no. the first. Yeah, first. So that's... So again, why construction? Yeah, so that's a bit of a misconception. I think we kind of get a little bit of a rap from coming from a bigger family that there's, you know, it's this long line of people that get into it, especially um, kind of just within, our, within like our age group. It's usually, you know, the uncle did it or the dad did it or the grandpa did it. And it's been How young are you? Uh, I'll be 25 this year. Holy... Yeah, <laughs> so... Maybe, maybe keep that part out for some of our clients. You're half my so age, man. So, yeah, so 25 <laughs> and you get into construction. Been in construction how long? Um, yeah, probably like yeah, probably six, seven years. Yeah, yeah. So you're a teenager. Yeah, so it was basically just throughout high school working your typical labor summer jobs. And then after, right after high school, I moved to Hawaii. Um, and I did carpentry over there for a while. Then I moved to New Zealand, and over there I did some carpentry, but most of my time over there was farming. Um, how was the carpentry in Hawaii and in Australia? Like, how is it? Is uh, it different than it is here? Ho well, in Hawaii we were doing, it was um, it was like homeless shelters and stuff. Yeah. Uh, but it, not, not shelters. There were still homes, but it was like affordable housing. So it was kind of just throw it up as quick as you can. But Got it. Um, and then over in New Zealand, I'd say it's, it's pretty similar, I, I would say, over there. Um. Yeah, but uh, yeah, working with all. But my my time over there was uh, more so farming, like for the work side of things. So you um, went there knowing you were going to be there for a while, and then you just kind of started working there, doing certain things there. Yeah, yeah, basically. 
So one way ticket, you didn't know. Yeah, I didn't know when I was coming back. I didn't have, uh, yeah, I, I didn't have any flight flight home. So, so I did that. I went to high school for a little while there, and then uh, came back home to where I grew up, which is Paris, Ontario. It's kind of just like a small farm I've been, town. I've been yeah, yeah, yeah. There. So it's a nice. I've town. ridden my bicycle way back when okay. I was your age. Yeah, through Paris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a, it's a nice town. It's grown insanely since I left there, but. Um, Anyways, I was never somebody who wanted to, to really be home, hence leaving right out of high school. And then I got home for two weeks and then uh, just moved up to Muskoka by myself. Um, so just found some lady on Airbnb and was bumming out of her basement, basically. But um, before I went up there, I made sure to get a job, though. So uh, there's uh, a good builder up there called South Mary Lake Contracting. Okay. Um, and I was up there working for a carpenter, uh, as a carpenter with them for a little bit. Um, and then... Yeah, just kind of decided to to go out on my own and see what I can do with it. So, um, yeah, it 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 hasn't been that long. Like when you when you, I don't know when you, you speak it out loud. I guess most people would think like, oh, you you know, you're know, still just getting into it. But I think we've kind of uh, created a pretty good reputation for ourselves so far. And sometimes those are early construction years, are almost yeah. like dog years, eh? Yeah. For every one, it's seven actually years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's uh, and the, well, I mean. I, I'm more so at this point now, I guess, like on on the contracting business side of things. So like we're taking a client right from, hey, I've got a vacant lot. Uh, I want to put a house up on it. Can you kind of bring that team together? So we don't have like an in-house architect or engineer and all that, but we'll, we'll bring those people on. We'll do all the planning, uh, go through the zoning with them. Um, and then right through to actually starting like the physical construction. Um, so really taking on that role now as the actual general contractor, plus, uh, like we have carpenters ourselves. Yeah. Now. You have your team, right? Yeah. But for the first, for the first year or so, um, first couple of years, it was just me and a few guys basically swinging a hammer, um, getting any job that we could did a bunch of subcontract work as well off the hop and then kind of got to know th- uh, people through that. So how does one 25 year old convince somebody <laughs> with a million plus budget yeah to hire them to build a dream something when a lot of some 25 yeah. year olds have a hard time convincing clients that they have the passion and the yeah. experience at that age that's been the hardest part and i'm not going to say that that's and we, we so still, it's been a conversation oh absolutely and we're yeah. still um we we still get those no client or potential client has said it like to my face but i'm they wouldn't yeah they wouldn't but um a hundred percent. That's like, I've heard that stuff in the background or I've heard, um, just, you know, we went with this other person from somebody else cause they've been around a bit longer or something. So it's definitely always been a challenge. Uh, and we're getting out of that now. Like I've got guys who work for me who are in their mid fifties and forties and, you know, we got red seal carpenters and we're putting guys through apprenticeships and, and all this stuff and we're registered home builders. So there's nothing us compared to a bigger builder other than not being around for 40 years. There's nothing that actually separates us. Um, and but you have to still prove yourself almost on a yeah, daily, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it just started off with doing good carpentry work, and then it kind of got into uh, really having to learn like the project management side of things and everything that actually goes on into a build. I mean, it's one thing to talk to uh, you know a carpenter who frames the place, does the exterior, interior finish, but then I mean, you've got four hundred line items on your proposal to to a client to take them from start to finish. So there's a lot of other things that you kind of learn throughout the throughout the way. So that was definitely my um, one of my biggest things is okay promising a client we're going to do the job, but also actually like delivering that promise um, because when you're starting out young and you're doing um, when you're taking on bigger job after bigger job after bigger like it's always quite a big leap to the next one. Yeah. And it's not like I worked for some custom home builder and worked my up way up to being a project manager and then I was there for twenty years before I started. Uh, so where go- were you learning? There's a bunch of questions I'm going to ask yeah, you. Yeah. Like, where did you pull your team from? Like, how did you find them? It yeah. was just all word of mouth talking to certain people. You um, met one trade, then they introduced you to another trade. It was basically all Indeed, to be honest. Really? Because moving Even up. Even the older guys? Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. So there is, well, there's quite a few challenges in, um, I mean, in, in to like the, the story of that, I guess, because you're moving up to a place where you know nobody, yeah, you're a young kid, scratch, yeah. you're, uh, you know, you don't have any money. I wasn't getting money from anywhere else. Um, so, yeah, I was uh, trying to, so you're selling people to win their projects, plus you're selling people to actually come and work for you. 
Plus, on the side of it, like even the clients aside, then you have the challenge of okay, you recognize that you need guys who uh, you know have thirty years in the in the industry. You recognize you need those guys who are the master framer who's seen everything and been through everything and hand cut roofs and all of that stuff. Um, so then convincing those people to come and work for you uh, is also another challenge. Yeah. Um, but I think client and potential employee wise, um, I think it's just them seeing that we're, you know, it's, I'm a young owner. Uh, we've got a pretty good reputation for ourselves so far. We're growing year after year after year. Um, I pay just as much, if not more, than these other guys and um, have the compensation that goes along with it as well. Um, and we just, we, we have a good, we have a good environment, like a good crew of guys and, uh, and all that. And as you grow, obviously, there's more challenges in, in dealing with more people and their emotions. And then people start complaining all the time. And then, you, you know, you don't want to go down that path. Of you're talking about trades or you're talking about clients? Or both? Both, both. both right? Yeah. I'm still trying to wrap my head around the hurdle of you being yeah. 25 and mm. selling the idea of you give me a million dollars plus to yeah. build my dream, right? Mm. That's what I'm trying to get around, right? Like that's, think, that's a hurdle. That's a huge hurdle. Yeah. And so I knew, I knew right from the bat that that challenge was going to be there. Um, so you just confronted it. Not, no, no, because I always, that was always a conversation I toy with back and forth in my house, in my head is, do you bring up early on? Um, and like joke around about it with how young you are or something. And, but I don't know, the more I kind of dove into it and thought about it, like they're either going to go with us or they're not going to go with us. It's I don't think they're gonna him and haw too much about you know, oh the the age and the experience and, and all those items, um, and that's been one of our biggest selling features. You know we like you guys and you guys do great work, um, and you know the communications there and the management is there. Um, but that first job though, it's always a hurdle to get that first job because so now you don't have any work to show people yeah. that this is what we're capable of yeah. doing. Right. So that very first job was me walking into a local uh, design shop. Uh, they're like an interior designer uh, and I just basically walked in and introduced myself who I was and what we do I didn't have any employees or anything it was just myself but how was that like I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how was that received when you walked in there and you're yeah. like going listen I'm just getting started yeah I don't have a resume so to speak yeah yeah but I've got the interest and passion to do this yeah. will you work with me will you vouch for me will you present me as part of a quote right yeah so they uh, I could tell they were definitely a little bit not taken back, but just not necessarily like taken too seriously. Um, but then, yeah, they, they emailed me the next day and they had this job. It was, uh, it was just a renovation to start, but a nice place out in, uh, in Rosso there. And it was kind of tag teamed with um, a contractor who the clients, like the homeowners knew, uh, but back down from Brantford area, like okay. Paris, Brantford area. Yeah. Uh, but he didn't, he didn't have the manpower. He wasn't the guy to like be up there all the time because he still had his own thing going down there. Um, so I was the first job. I was basically like a glorified site super, but still advertising it as my own thing because it was still uh, our own thing. Like we were bringing in the painters and um, you know the electricians and all that stuff, having the electrical walkthroughs with the client and you know um, all of those items there. So um, that was kind of the first one, uh, which helped us quite a bit. A lot of building the portfolio from there was working for working as like a subcontractor. Okay. Um, yeah, which is smart. Build yeah, a resume. Which you see a lot of. And I was a bit weary of that at the start too, because I didn't want to come across as uh, which definitely some people like perceived us in that way of um you know, just us advertising the work that we do and, and all of those items. Um, but we're not actually like the full G C of the project. But, it, I mean, you see it left, it left, right, and center of guys out on Instagram and stuff like that. Uh, you know, this is our new project and framing project and deciding. And I always specify what we were actually doing on the project. Which would, is good. Yeah. I would never say, you know, this, because uh, then you're kind of stealing somebody's work at that point. But I always yeah. just, I was really open about just sharing exactly who's in the yeah. shot and yeah. who's doing the work. And I was always giving kudos to whoever actually did the work because I had a lot of respect for the work that was being done. Yeah. And I'm like... I'm the GC. Yeah. I'm literally just the PM. I'm yeah. not swinging the hammer because I don't want to swing the hammer yeah. anymore. Yeah. But I'm giving credit to the person who's swinging hammer. Yeah. So I was just being respectful. That's all it was. And we were we we were perceived that way for the first while, and then it got to a point where, like, as those leads came in of us actually being the GC and getting, I guess, them actually being our our leads and our clients. Um, I think a few of the guys that we worked with 
as sub trades. Once we started to say like, no, we can't take on the next project because we're going to do our own thing on the next one. Or really, I think that because it's so hard to find good people. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of it came from we had some manpower. Like during those times, we were probably six to like six eight people, um, and so we were able to take on other GCs' work for them. Um, but it just got. I knew. I knew we didn't want to stay as a subcontractor. Just stay as like a carpentry company. I want to. Uh, I want to just backtrack a tiny yeah. bit. Like, at what point did you see this? Like when you were working as a laborer. Yeah. Did you have a moment where you actually saw this? You saw this is what I want to do. I want to run a business, even yeah. though it's not in my family. Yeah. Even though I'm not a GC, I didn't go to GC school. I yeah. didn't. I didn't go that path. I haven't been handed down through heritage or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, was there a moment in your life that you said, I can see this vision, I can see this business that I want to grow that now today is successful yeah. and it's growing and now the word of mouth is just exposing. Yeah. Right. So yeah. like, was there a moment? Did you experience that? Um, I wouldn't say it was like one moment. I was always, I always knew at some point that um, I wanted to make something my own and actually be an entrepreneur. And uh, I mean, there's obviously tons of risks that come with that, I mean, through learning experiences, I've lost tons of money left, right, and center as well. Um, but be before construction? No, no, no. Like during growing the business. Yeah, I'm just being like, oh, I forgot. <laughs> Those that. are called life lessons. Yeah, man. yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. So, um, no, I always knew it was. Yeah, I always knew it was coming, and uh, even when I first started, uh, first started doing it, I knew that there was uh, all of those challenges that were going to be right there, but. Um, what was the first hard lesson that you learned, whether it be loss of money or what have you, but what was the first hard lesson mm, for me? Yeah, yeah. It was me not understanding why a trade would not want to build it better mm-hmm. instead of just punch the clock and just do it the way they've been doing it for whatever amount of years. Mm-hmm. I questioned the ability to just do it better at the time, because in my mind, I felt it costs the same to do it shit. Yeah. as it is to do it well yeah yeah what was the first hard lesson for yourself mm-hmm. i don't know i think when you're young and you're trying to start something um and you think that you're like a respectful kid and you know you work hard for people and, and all those different items i think you look to people who are currently doing it or um people who have the experience or are older or have, you know, guys your age who are working for their company and trying to talk to those people kind of to find a little bit of advice um, or run an idea past them. Or um, you always hear those stories of entrepreneurs. Like I had this mentor or I had this, uh, you know, I, I've never had any of that. We like, um, so who did you turn to? It, nobody really like, um, but you feel that you need, no, I, I don't think I do. I think I kind of got fed up at a point, but I think that was, um, you know, because that was always my uh, dad's perception in, in our conversations of, you know, me starting the company and all that. He's like, well, just, you know, go find a couple guys who are already doing it, you know, pick their brain, do this, do that, kind of like the old school way of doing it. But nobody wanted to, to have any conversation with They didn't want to share? No, it was... The majority of industry doesn't yeah, want to share. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I just, I always got perceived as... Uh, like being this arrogant kid coming around thinking that he could. But all you're doing is asking questions. You're just asking oh, exactly. how you did yeah, things, right? Yeah. So then I could try to figure out how to do it better, if yeah. not do it the same. Yeah, so I kind of got fed up with that at a certain point, and then I just figured, okay, well, I'm just going to keep on going with all these items here, and I'll make the own de- my own decisions, and then when I pay for it, I'll pay for it, and either keep going with it or, um, you know, have to backtrack from it. So um, I think mean, getting to a point now where I think other companies can see that, we uh we are making a name for ourselves and we're not just you know joe blow on the side of the street or um some family construction company that doesn't they're not a licensed builder they don't have any insurance or like any of that um like we're actually i'm actually trying to build a legitimate company let Um, me ask you i'm just curious sorry i just i got i got questions all kinds of questions right i just when you started the business what value did you give that name compared to what mm-hmm. value you're giving that name today? Have you given it a dollar value? Uh, like, what do you mean dollar value? Well, because I, I, I like what you're saying. I totally respect what you're saying, where yeah. you're establishing a business. You're new to the construction. For, for all intents and purposes, yeah, you're, yeah. you're new to construction. You're, you haven't been given something from mm. a parent or an uncle or somebody, mm. and you, you didn't really work 
for somebody else that kind of handed it off to you. You're building it on your own, right? Mm. So it's like when you decided to start it on your on your own, yeah. And you you had a value attached to this vision of yours, and then you're trying to speak to people to give you some more insight to help you build this vision. But then the construction, which is typical, by the way, mm -hmm. they won't help you because yeah. they'll think that you're competition. So they're like, if I feed you information and then I help you educate, and all of a sudden you'll become better and you'll be my competition, and I might lose a job towards you, yeah. which is a total stupid mindset to have, right? Yeah. So I just figure at some point you're looking at this brand that you're trying to build. It has a certain value at that moment, mm. and then once you get to building it and it's growing, mm -hmm. you, it has a different value. Yeah. So it's like, that's why I was asking what value have you given yourself? I because you're bringing a lot to the table. Yeah. At the start, I didn't, uh, the name didn't. It's zero. Even if my brother came to work for me or not, I had no brothers. Like, that's just what I was going to call it. It was, it, it didn't have a huge, I've always wanted so Like you see those big transport trucks driving down the roads and it's like something in sons or something. Yeah, yeah. I always thought that was cool, which it's is kind of why I came cool. up with yeah, yeah. bread and brothers. Um, but uh, at the start, no, when I was growing it, uh, just like very, very weary all the time of like how I was being perceived or how. Um, um, by the I don't know. by the clients? Yeah, by the client. Or by the, by the industry. Which one was more the, valuable? The clients or the industry and how they perceived you? Mm, I think it's a hard question. Off the start or what are my thoughts about it right now? See, I'm older than you. I've yeah. been in the industry for 15 years. Yeah. I came from a different industry. In my mind, I don't give a fuck what people think about me. Yeah. Whether they like me or not, that's up to you. It has mm -hmm. nothing to do with me. It's I'm not going to change my opinion. Mm -hmm. Can I deliver on construction? Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. I know what I'm talking about. I was cocky enough to come onto a job site where I had ideas and I would present certain ideas and all of a sudden people liked those ideas. Yeah. But I always pushed. I always push ideas and I always want to try to build something different. Mm. So with you getting started, I guess it's an interesting question to ask. Mm. It's like, did you want validation from your coworkers or your sub trades or your competition or the clients? At the start, it was the clients. The clients I wanted those, which is what you should have. Yeah. I wanted those leads coming in. I mean, if like your, your main thing starting out is to, um, we got to sell the job. Yes. And then you have to perform it. Yes. Um, and I was confident that we could perform it for what we were advertising during that time. Um, but I wanted the, like the, the biggest thing that would keep me up at night over like those, um, like the first few couple of years there was basically, okay, I've got these guys who are working for me. Um, it's, it's making me money as well. Uh, we're doing a good job. I like the guys that are working with me. Um, I hate to be in that, that position of, you know, we're going to be wrapped up this job in a couple of weeks once the next one's starting. Or has this one actually been sold yet? Or like, so that. Oh, you're hating the position of being fired. Yeah. Like yeah. unemployed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which happens at, at the end of every single job. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I think like, um, and I, I love that side of things. And that's kind of grown um, to be like a big portion of my passion as well, along with the building and all that. But it's. Um, is actually like selling the job, like the proposal we give out and how we talk to them and how I sell myself. Like it was... Um, Do you like it because you're hungry at that moment for the next one? Yeah, I, I'm definitely hungry on every single job, yeah. Um, so, and even like we're at a point now where we've got... Using digital platforms in our industry is becoming more common, especially among the young folks, because it improves efficiency, prevents mistakes, and overall makes our lives as contractors easier. This is why we partnered with Connect Team, a platform built to manage, train, and communicate with your team. Connect Team's desktop version gives managers a live overview of the business to track work hours, create schedules, make sure the business meets compliance, and so much more. Employees just download the app to their mobile to clock in and out, share safety reports, and get updates all in one place, ensuring they've got what they need to perform at their best. Connect Team has a free plan and a 14-day free trial. Try them today by checking out the link in the show notes. Like, what? You, you start off wanting to get all the leads, and then you have to take all the leads because you got the employees coming on, but then they're not always the best quality leads. So then you're kind of dragging your feet all the time, wondering if guys are still going to work with you. You know, you're supposed to be framing this house, but you guys got, you know, you're down there um, pouring concrete and stuff like that. So, uh, but we're, we're now at a point where all of our leads coming in are, you know, full builds or full boat houses or large renovations and like stuff that we actually want to take on. Um, but we're now at a point of uh, not scaling backwards, but I've made the choice to kind of sit still where we are for at least like the next year. 
uh, because I know we're at it. You always see the same, the, the story of uh, like people growing too fast. Yeah. And we're, we're definitely at that point this year where if we continued going the way that we were going, then we would just be another one of those companies. Um, so, and I knew like the, the actual business side, like the systems of uh, even just the communication of yourself and your construction manager down to your site super, down to your carpenters, down to your laborers, to your trades people too. Um, what was the fear, Emerson? Like, what was the fear? Was it um, you were concerned that you're going to water down the brand? I think if you well, grew too fast, I think it was the I think it's the control part. Like I said, the reason people are saying yes to us is because they see like who I am and who we are as a company. Okay. Um, and we've got great communication. Um, and I mean, there, there's tons of people in Muskoka who can build a beautiful home. Um, and I mean, obviously out there, you've got guys spending. $50 million on a cottage in some instances, which is crazy. Um, so the, the, the quality is up there if you're looking for it in Muskoka. Now, those people are obviously booked uh, years in advance. But if you're spending that kind of money, uh, I would say in most cases, you know, just during the design phase, you're spending a year as it is to figure out what you actually uh, are going to put down on paper. Um, but... Um, I mean, so I, I don't, yeah. Oh, no, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Listen, there's no format to the show. Yeah, the show just yeah. goes where it goes or whatever. But I when you're I love that you're because that's what I did in the beginning is yeah. I, I love babysitting the client and walking them through the process where you're hanging out, you're discussing design options, you're you're looking at drawings and all this other mm -hmm. shit. But the unfortunate thing that I did when I was doing all that stuff was I was never compensated for my time. And even though I was yeah. tr contributing quite a bit of knowledge from what I was giving them mm. i was never compensated for it so i guess my question to you is that are you being compensated to to kind of handhold the client to the process where you start swinging the first hammer uh like are we doing that yeah 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 we are so now you are but in the beginning you weren't right no because no no. and i'm still at that point where because like my, our part of growth now is um basically having that construction manager or whatever every company calls it something different but so we'll have myself who's acting as the pm uh, with the construction manager who's going to oversee, you know, three to five projects on the go at once, and then a site super for each one of those projects, and then carpenters, like the, the typical contractor format if you have carpenters. Um, but even my time, um, uh, I don't know how much I still, I still don't know how much I value my time right now. I'm not saying that it's not worth anything. It's obviously worth something. But it'll be a long, long time where I'm going to, not make that intro visit with a new client or make, you know, three site visits with a client who isn't even our uh, uh, client at that point um, to where I'm now saying like, oh, yeah, for that first intro visit, it's $500 for me to come out there and, you know, chat with you guys. And um, do you feel that you don't you're not ready to charge them? Mm, I just don't want to because I still want to build a relationship. I still want to build a relationship. And if I don't I would much rather give up a few thousand dollars of my time to win the project that's going to, you know, boost our reputation and make a lot more money than that, than um, bat an eye to it and let somebody else who's in my position win that project because, you know, they're they're not at that point yet. I, I agree with you. Yeah. I totally agree with yeah. you. It's like I know that a lot of people have preached about you should be charging for all minutes of your time right yeah. so it's like your experience your knowledge and now you're going to the client you're spending time with them you're discussing the options yeah. and shit like that and like a lot of people preach about how you should be charging them a fee so it's mm. like i charge them 1500 bucks whatever for that fee and that fee will be discounted from the job if you hire me right mm. and i think that you shouldn't be doing that because yeah. what you're doing is you're basically you're nurturing stability in the project mm. that's what you're doing right so you know that if you're giving this up to them yeah. and you're you're basically connecting to, with them character wise personality wise that they'll award the job to you you get the job and now you can deliver now you can deliver everything mm. that you just said that you can promise you can deliver yeah so that wave that fee so to speak is valuable by doing that mm. so now you got in the job and now you got to start swinging the hammer yeah absolutely and, and during those like during a full build you absolutely still have that site supervision fee so that's still being charged for i'm yeah. just talking in that initial like sales proposal phase um if it's a big job i might say you know you you owe me some money for um for the final proposal because we break it down into different steps of proposals it's like your feasibility one 
uh, your preliminary and then your final for that final one. But I mean, but for a bit, a large project, if you're giving me a detailed set of architectural drawings along with your interior designers notes, if we haven't brought them on, um, you know, I could be a month plus putting that estimate together uh, just for a client to, you know, say, screw you, we used you because you guys are young and we're going with this guy actually. So True. at that point, uh, and I, I think I have a good, pretty good sense of like what the client is is looking for actually out of us if they're actually looking to get a project with us or if they just want those numbers um but even if it's we've had a couple uh pretty wealthy people come in looking for those numbers and i've decided during those times to to kind of soak that mindset and just give them that proposal because i know at some point down the road they're going to get pissed off with what other contractor they're using for and then they'll go back to thinking of us um of you know hey this guy busted my tail to get me this proposal on time and didn't even charge you know didn't even charge me anything for me uh he had three site visits with me or my property maintenance guy or you know um just to kind of get the information he needed um so they can see that we're actually there to serve did you get anybody to educate you on how to break down proposals or you just kind of came up that on your own no i came with, uh, up with that on my own I mean, you can From find what, like, what were you kind of pulling? Your resources? Yeah, well, you can find anything on YouTube or a lot of it was, uh, well, a, a lot of the steps I knew like that need to be there. But as far as actually presenting that, uh, that even till this point is still like ever evolving. So we've got, uh, we use a platform called co-construct now. Oh, um, I know. Yeah, yeah. So it's okay. like builder trend or, yeah. 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 Um, anyway, so we use that now and that's got an estimating proposal side to it. Um, and that's where, uh, I don't know, I guess we, our proposals start to look professional. Before then, I was just giving like a PowerPoint, basically presentation. Um, how good are they when it comes to custom? Like really, really custom stuff. Uh, how good's what? I don't know, if you've got really custom trim work, custom tile work, yeah. how good are they when it comes to estimating that to kind of get, I mean, the crappy thing is that you got to get as close as possible mm. to the number because mm. you don't want to go back to your client going, oh, I kind of messed up on my number on how custom this is going to be. So then I got to kind of yeah. charge you a bit more, right? Yeah, well, it depends. Like all of our stuff is, uh, like we do time material format. Okay. Um, but that being said, like it's, I mean, we just finished up a pretty large renovation and there's just stuff. Once we ripped out, we knew we were putting all new windows in. But once we ripped out all the old windows, I mean, like all the sills were rotten everywhere. All the, you know, everything was basically rotten. So just just from that point, between material um, and time on that place, we were already an extra, you know, thirty something grand just to uh, replace all the framing for those ROs. How was that um, conversation with the client? Mm, I don't. At, at this point, I don't really. I, I feel for them because they're having to spend their money on it. But at the same time, I'm not going to, uh, uh, I don't know. I don't want to word it in the wrong way, but it's not like there's nothing I could have done about that. No, it's something yeah. that you discovered and now you yeah. want to build it a certain way to yeah. please them. So then the house won't fall apart eventually. Yeah. So you got to bring it up, but it's always a discussion. Yeah. And, and the discussion always turns into negotiation. Yeah. There's no, like there's, I don't really think there's much negotiation. Like we have our labor rates, we have our markup. Um, we're here to get the job done properly for you. Uh, there isn't really, in my mind, like a negotiation at that point. Um, you know, it's something, and we, we set that expectation right from the start. Though I think that's where a lot of issues come from: is uh, people just throw out this extremely low bid to win the job, Lots and they get that. into it, then they start growing, then they get busy, and their communication with the client gets poor, and then that on top of uh, you know, you're, you're into it at a certain point and you're already $100,000 over budget um, in areas that weren't surprises or weren't um, supposed to be that way. Then you get into a serious battle with the relationship. But right off the start uh, on that renovation, we did our point to uh, like bringing our sub trades and have inspections done and all those items, which you obviously bill for. Mm-hmm. Um, but just trying to set that expectation of we don't know what we're getting into until we rip these walls apart. Um, and we sure don't try. I think some people try to play that game of uh, budget increase after budget increase after budget increase and just playing that, uh, well, it's time material and we don't know this and we don't know that. But, you know, uh, some of those people were way underbidding that project from the start anyways. Yeah, but that's the game that yeah. is in yeah. construction, right? So yeah. how is business up there uh, in your in area, what, right? Yeah, I, don't, I mean, in what way? It's I, I think anybody would just say it's, it's, it's 
<laughs> no signs of recession, no signs of everything. Clients are still spending money. I just, I see that yeah. a lot of guys are talking about clients are postponing or pushing. Yeah, we've had that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Basically, since I've started the company, we've had that. So we've had quite a few. How do you handle that? Like, what do you do? You uh, just stay communicating with them, and then when they're ready to go, pull the trigger, they call you. Yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty keen on the follow-ups. I've got a full... I've got, I mean, you, you open your email there, you got all the tabs on the side there. So I've got all my tabs for like current projects. And then uh, basically I've got a full another section for uh, strong leads, a full another section for uh, basically just like weak leads, whatever you want to call it. Um, but once, once every like two weeks, I'll go through the weak leads and follow up with every single one that's of those what, people. Even before you bring that up, I get the yeah. sense that that's what you do. So even if you spoke to somebody yeah. and it was like lukewarm possibility. Yeah. The following week, you're still following up with something, yeah. whether it, it's a conversation of something. Yeah, right? and it's 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 huge, and it definitely needs to be there if you're, um, if you're if you're trying to capture those leads. Absolutely, because we've got people from uh, from years ago who you know just reach out. We had a ha happen last week, probably a good another six million dollars worth of leads uh, between two clients uh, that just they both came in the same day and they were from years ago saying hey we postponed at that time it wasn't the right time but um you know we're now ready to get going again can you get going on a revised uh, proposal for me um so it it depends on what you want to do there but it's also it's also an insane amount of work to keep tabs on that many people yeah, yeah. Um, which i've had to cut back on at this point because uh, you can have all the leads you want but if you're not going to perform the, the quality and the service that you say that you're going to then you'll be done pretty quick um, so right now we're really just focusing on basically like those systems, um, and the communication between our actual team and our sub trades and making those relationships with, uh, with the sub trades as well, more and more as we grow and we need more. Um, can can yeah. you Emerson just kind of, I want you to, I'd love for you to share if you can, um, the evolution of your business. Yeah. Like, like I, I, I tell people, I think people I've known this about on a show is like, I started with a powder room. Yeah. That was my very first one, right? Powder room led to a laundry room, laundry room led to a, like a kitchen, kitchen led to bathrooms. And then eventually I got to the point where I, I renovated every single room, interior, exterior, whatever. And then I finally, I got an opportunity to build a house. Yeah. I wanted to figure out what's your evolution. Where did you start and where are you getting to right now today? Yeah. So I'd say, um, so that renovation I was talking about, right off the bat, that was a nice place on Lake Rosso. Um, our portion of it was probably already a couple hundred thousand, few hundred thousand. Um, and that was a, a an addition to an existing structure. No, just uh, exterior and interior work. Okay. We add um, on the we added bathrooms and bedrooms and stuff like that, but nothing uh, beyond what the already uh, footprint was. Um, so that that definitely set the tone um for well i can say that but it's not true because it it worked for the first little bit and then um there just wasn't enough knowledge of us out there to where we're going to continue keep on getting jobs like that but uh, to answer your question it basically went from that one to what was the budget on that one uh for for us there yeah um oh, i don't know it was a while ago um when you say a while ago, like what, like <laughs> two years ago? Well, no. Listen, a while ago to yeah. a 51 year old yeah, man is yeah. like 30 years no, ago. No, I don't man. say that in an arrogant <laughs> way. I say that in, I just, I like week after week after week, I'm giving proposal, proposal, proposal. Got so it. I got so yeah, many numbers and people's it, names yeah. in my mind I that, it, it. you know, and started to go crazy. But um, I'm just trying to figure out the evolution of it because, I mean, you start off at yeah. one, one size, one scope, one price, and then you start realizing I didn't charge enough. Mm hmm. I'm more valuable. And then you finally get to your sweet spot where you realize what your worth is. Well, so for, yeah. So for that job there, I was only billing my time Got to it. do the physical work plus be like the site super. Yeah. But I was still bringing in sub trades, lining them up, like working with the well, designer the to talk the to them. Uh, for my portion, I think I was uh, probably like 150 grand. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then from that job, it went to what job? Um, what was after that? Uh, I think we finished a boathouse off for somebody. Um, so like lots of small kind of miss, and they're all over the place. It'd be exterior finish on this one or framing this one or, um, you know, interior finish on this one. I don't, I, I'm not going to lie. I don't know what all. Okay. No, I, I was just start. curious <laughs> about it. But then when was the first house? Um, 
first house. Or I guess first full build, right? Yeah. So that, well, I would say, yeah, so we're about a year into it at that point. Uh, so obviously, again, not that long ago. Um, but yeah, yeah, probably about a year into and it. And that I was think. what? How many square feet home? Uh, that was like 2,800 square feet. Not yeah. massive. No, but decent like, size. Yeah. For and a, few, was a few guys, yeah. And what was the budget on that? Uh, at the time, we were, was there anything crazy? Anything like 650000 and that yeah. was about a year ago. Or? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's decent. Yeah. So, so there was a, there was some good ideas. The clients were happy and things. And then you pull that off. Yeah. And then from there you're going to what? Um, from well, so that's the thing is like even because it's like construction isn't when when you start getting into full build, it's not like you can just whip something up overnight. No. You know what I mean? It takes time. So we were in a position where, like I was talking about, where I always had fear about that. We finished that one off because I just thought, okay, you know, this is going to be our longest job. We're going to be here for the longest point. Um, and then um, we went back to all like the scummy work because I was just trying to fill time because I never had something lined up again yet. Uh, and we had plenty of leads out there. I was trying to get people to finally say yes to it. but And we did get people to say yes to it, but it wasn't actually going to start for a year later and, and all those items. So, um, yeah, during those times, we had a bunch of scummy jobs, and then we basically went into a few quite nice renovations. Uh, and then that took us to the point of basically us starting, like, our current projects now. Okay. Um, which is, yeah, we got a full build on Lake Muskoka there. Uh, we're doing a boathouse on Lake Muskoka. Uh, we're doing a new build out uh, Dorset way. Uh, so we'll have those three main projects on the go at once, uh, which they're all currently on the go right now. We still have a bunch of little filler jobs, like doing $150,000 basement renovation and, and those items like that. Um, what are the so clients like when it gets to like, I've never had a client that yeah. talked to me about a boathouse. Yeah. Like, like, what are the clients like? Yeah. Well, these aren't, these aren't your typical, like, um, I don't know if you're you're asking that as a, like are they kind of like a little bit prissy or prestigious? Uh, or yeah, like, I'm just trying <laughs> to figure out like yeah. clients are all they're interesting characters yeah, yeah, in my world, yeah. right? No, these well, these clients are fantastic. They're I actually the reason we got this job is because growing up through high school, one of my uh, one of my good buddies, this is his parents. Okay, um, so these people are salt to the earth, like hardcore chicken farmers and stuff like that. And um, I mean, I think they owned a good good bit of land there, which is. Uh, done well along with obviously their their hard work and stuff so um, and i think they've had this cottage for quite a while now yeah. um anyway so they've they have this cottage and then they had an existing boathouse but they knew they wanted to get rid of it and do something else uh so that was for example a project where um like we brought on the architect the engineer and all that stuff to actually design their boathouse um and now we've got a crew there starting the decking um and then we'll go into to framing it and how's the city because i mean i could just i've only heard right yeah, so it's yeah. like once you tear down an existing structure and then now you start building a new structure yeah. then there might be new rules regarding the city yeah so that one there they did um they took the planning portion on themselves in terms of uh, like the zoning and everything anyways they were i think like two years of going back and forth just to get approved for this new boathouse ouch um what were some of the details that they had to rezone i guess for so they wanted a bathroom upstairs which <laughs> is one of the hardest things to because yeah. it starts to become a dwelling yeah well it's yeah so they they already had their like the footprint they well that was another issue so they were already grandfathered in the footprint uh of the existing boathouse but okay. then they wanted to go bigger as well they wanted to get further out into the lake they wanted to i wasn't a part of the whole thing um and i mean they it, if you're a planning company uh to know all the ins and out of all those things like it's not i'm gonna admit it's not my you know full expertise there so i the know world, enough man. about it yeah yeah, yeah you're basically like a you know when you're trying to get someone a nice big boathouse on one of those lakes, you're basically a lawyer at that point of trying to <laughs> try to There's get it. There's so many them. rules and then all kinds of yeah, and they change all the time too. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but even even now we're having like, I won't speak too much on it because it's an ongoing project, but um, we had some issues with uh, just like the septic design and stuff getting approved that the township didn't actually approve uh, once they came out for their inspection of it, and then having to. Uh, basically come up with a whole redesign for it and um, that stuff wasn't done uh, like as a part of our scope either but 
Yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna say too much more than. No, no, it's fine. <laughs> I'm just curious about it because you, you're learning on each project, right? Yeah, absolutely. So you're yeah. trying to figure yeah. out what's gonna happen, and then next time a client comes by and they want to do that exact same kind of scope of work, yeah. you got a better understanding of what to expect and yeah. what to educate them on that, right? Yeah. So then it kind of makes you look good at that point. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So it keeps on growing. So right now you got the three builds going mm-hmm. on, right? And I guess. What is uh, still? I I I, I'm trying to figure out the question. Um, What is the biggest lesson that you learned, just getting started in the industry? Like, because it's it's unfortunate because, but you're not the only one Mm. that you didn't get a lot of assistance. You Mm. didn't get a lot of help from people saying, "Listen, we get, we want you to, you you want to come into construction. We get that, but we don't want to give you shit about it." Well, I also understand too because there's a lot of fly by nights nowadays. Oh, 100 percent! It's they can go make their fifty five bucks an hour, yeah. you know, doing something somewhere else, and it's great money. And they're great salespeople, and yeah. they convince people to hire yeah. them. Yeah, but then they all, uh, like I don't know. In my opinion, then they all start talking the same. Then they start getting into, oh, I don't need to do this, and I don't, you know, I don't mess around with Terry on, and it's a, you know, it's all scam and all these things. And I mean, I have my opinions about it too. But it depends what you want. I knew at the end of the day, I wanted to actually grow a business. And to do that, I needed to tick those things off. Um, well, Terion is a scam. But the unfortunate <laughs> thing is that Terion is a requirement. I didn't, I didn't want to say that. Oh, no, yeah. I'll say it. I said that. I don't give a <laughs> shit. But Terion, in my opinion, is a mafia. Yeah. and But it's a requirement now, yeah. right? Until it changes law-wise or whatever. Yeah. And, and that's a different story. But if you want to build a new structure, mm. you have to involve Terion. Yeah, they just want, I think they just want a little bit of uh, all the, we need more housing, we need more housing. So we might as well get a little bit on all the houses too. Um, now it's But that's no different than... Vinny and Tony one. walking into a business and shaking them down. Mm. That's my opinion. Again, yeah, I'm just yeah. going to let everybody know that's yeah, my yeah. opinion, right? Yeah. That's no different than that. So yeah. it's like you're an established builder. You're building credibility. Mm. You've got great work going on. People yeah. are seeing the great work. I don't need Vinny and Tony telling me, you need to give us a piece of the pie. Well, the issue of the two is we've never been in a situation of it, but uh, I've heard many stories as well. Of once Terry on actually gets involved with the warranty program, they just, like any other insurance, they do everything they can to not actually pay out for it. And then the homeowner's stuck with, well, what did we what did we get Terry on for? Why? Like, it, yeah. it, that, that yeah. okay, I think anybody that gets involved with that word Terry on yeah. comes up with the phrase, why did we get involved with Terry on? That comes up. It's just honestly, yeah. it just it's a, that's why I'm not a fan of it. I'm still trying to get somebody from Terry on in the show because mm. that'll be entertaining in my yeah. eyes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I'll just be asking them direct questions and they won't be answering them. Yeah. But I don't give a shit at that point. So that's what, I get it. So I respect that you and, and it's like you get the proper insurance. You're you're doing everything legitimately. You're doing everything properly. So then you can show your clients that I'm not a fly by night. I'm yeah. not in this just for the short game. I'm in this for the long game. I'm yeah. building a brand. I want to be successful. I care about your business. I, re- I care about your home. I care about the, the the property I'm building for your family, for your loved ones, generational, all that stuff. And I respect all that. That's great. But there's a lot of corruption in construction. Mm-hmm. Everyone knows that shit, oh, absolutely, right? absolutely, yeah. So I'm sure that one day I'll probably get a knock on the door going, stop saying there's corruption in construction. Well, yeah. you being here means there's corruption in construction. Yeah, no, absolutely. And you, hear, <laughs> you do hear those stories all the time, too. And this is like, it's not... Uh, Especially to, like, when you're up there in Muskoka, you just think that every single person has money. You, you know, you see mm. this, you see that. Well, well, I think a lot of people's perception would be that. Yeah, you assume it from a you distance. As, yeah, You assume it. But then when you're starting out, then you've got people who have, you know, a, a $12,000 budget for their bathroom. Or they have... Which is uh, totally cool. Well, absolutely. But you then, it's... I mean, you bust your tail to work your money, whether you're making it through construction or you're working it through some other job. So I don't... I've never had that mindset of Muskoka is just a place of money. And when you're st- first starting out, too, like you're not starting out with the $50 million build. Oh. So even to this. Would you want to? I'm to get to a $50 million No, no. Like, would you want oh. to start there? Like that's what do you mean? fear. Like actually a client going, hey, listen, I can give me a phone call. I got a $50 million job. Would you want to do it? Oh, no, I wouldn't want to start there. So exactly. no, in my mind, I wanted to start there, but. Uh, no, but now you got a taste of construction. You're like, no, I'm not well, ready for that. And so I guess to answer, I don't know if I answered your question, or maybe there's two parts to it of like what I guess a big lesson that I've learned is now at this point in trying to grow is the employment side of things of learning, like learning to navigate all those different relationships uh, and putting trust in those people. And then when those people screw you over, like what you do about that. And the trades? Uh, no, not trades, like actual employees. Okay, yeah, yeah. all right. So, um, so how many employees do you, like, 
Okay, so you've gone the employee route instead of the subtrade route, or is it mixed oh, bag? Both, both. both. We right. need both, yeah. Got so it. the employees um, are like carpenters. Yes. So everything else we need to sub out, electricians, yes. plumbers, HVAC. Yeah. We used to do our own footings and foundations too, but we sub that out now as well. So, um, yeah, so we have... Yeah, we have a massive uh, sub-trade list of people that we try to work with. So and how do you navigate through those waters? What have you learned? Uh, with the sub-trades? Well, with the employees or with the sub-trades, like when things yeah, so don't I, go well. Yeah, I think my, my point was more on the employees there. Uh, I think it's more so like during the hiring stage. Because when you want to grow and you want to take on this job and that job, like, you know, if someone comes to you with a resume that says they've been doing this for 18 years, 20 years, and then you have an interview with them, um, and they say, yeah, I can do this. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, I can do this. And then they actually get to start working for you. And then it's just nothing but headaches and they have no idea what they're actually doing. So I've seen that. Um, How do you handle that? Cause I mean, me, yeah, I'm like, listen, nice to meet you. Don't yeah. bother coming back tomorrow. Yeah. So in my, in my mind, I'm always like that, but the only issue, and I was talking to Liv about this the other day is when you, unfortunately, I feel that there's. Everyone always complains about that we can't find people, we can't find good people. That's and all a those constant things. Yeah. theme. Yeah. It, 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 it's always going to be a thing. Now, it's one thing to say that. It's another thing to like legitimately be spending money and time to. Like, I spent thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars trying to find people, uh, and I've been finding them. Um, so I think that a lot of those people, too, are the guys, you know, yeah, talking to somebody at Timmy's and be like, oh, I can't find anybody, I can't find anybody. But um, the thing I was talking to Liv about was, there seem like, unfortunately, I think that there's a bit of a situation too where somebody is, say, a half decent employee for you, but they're still like they're taking two sick days a week. They're taking you know time off to do this. They're showing up uh, here and there and then sick, sick of, yeah. like, <laughs> like what? I I can tell you yeah. honestly, I've yeah. not been sick for like four years. Yeah, no, I I won't give any specific stories <laughs> because I think it would be it'd be pretty obvious of who it was. Is it like sick are. around World Cup or Euro Cup <laughs> or sick around certain holidays? Sick no, it's your typical Monday and Friday. Oh, yeah, man, yeah. really that? Yeah. The yeah. weekly sick? Yeah, but the only problem is what I'm saying is that when you're, uh, like, when you're growing, even if that person is showing up three days a week and giving you a good three days it's a not week. not worth it. Um, like, dur- during those times for me, it was worth it. But I've now learned at this point that the, well, A, what it shows to all the other employees of what you tolerate then gives them a better taste. Um, and then it's, even though it's going to be a headache to let that person go and try to refill that position, you're much better. I believe now that you're much better off going to the client and, you know, explaining the situation of, hey, we might be a little bit delayed on this section now, but, you know, I'm going to find the, um, you know, we're going to regroup on this item and, and get going on it again. But so I, I agree in taking that route now of just letting that person continue to be, uh, you know, toxic the whole time in the. <laughs> I'm glad that you said it because that's exactly true. It's it's yeah. toxic environment at that point, right? Oh, it's terrible. And that's that like it's, it is not a, an easy job. I mean, showing up every single day for 10 and a half hours in the freezing cold and the pissing rain and the beating sun, like day after day after day after day, like that's, you know, you, you, along with your physical shape, you got to have some mental shape there as well to continually do that. Um so I go back to why did you choose construction if it's not in your family? All well, your friends are, what are your friends? I, I just want to, I'm mm. curious. What are your circle of friends doing? Using digital platforms in our industry is becoming more common, especially among the young folks, because it improves efficiency, prevents mistakes, and overall makes our lives as contractors easier. This is why we partnered with Connect Team, a platform built to manage, train, and communicate with your team. Connect Team's desktop version gives managers a live overview of the business to track work hours, create schedules, make sure the business meets compliance, and so much more. Employees just download the app to their mobile to clock in and out, share safety reports, and get updates all in one place, ensuring they've got what they need to perform at their best. Connect Team has a free plan and a 14-day free trial. Try them today by checking out the link in the show notes. Most of them are just wrapping up like school. Are still in school. Oh, really? Yeah, I got. So, a, what were they studying? I don't know. It's your typical like kinesiology or something. That, something to go to school to party for, and then uh, kind of leave after that. So while I was while I was traveling and then working and you know farming and all that stuff, uh, it was all my buddies, uh, like who I would consider my friends. Um, like they were all the ones out in u- university. Uh, so there was always that difference from from day one. Um, and I'd say most of my close friends are still. Like, like those people. Um, but 
obviously have like friends within the company and my brother and stuff like that where um you know there's there's a few of us out there still busting our tail 16 hours they're they're gonna finish school and then all of a sudden they've spent parents money six figures yeah yeah and you know whatever career path they want to choose um and then they're gonna what like get into the the world well, so they're at that, that stage now of, uh, you know, within the last year, a couple of years, they're all done now. And it's, uh, I think half of them are saying, I'm going to go back to school. I think the other half are going to, uh, I don't know. I la- I'm sorry, I laugh. Yeah. It's, it's just like, why, you just finished school, now you're going back to school? Yeah. Well, I, I, did. di- I didn't like the first school I did? Yeah, yeah. So I never knew, I always knew I was never going to be the, uh, like, the academic there. And I felt college was just a waste of my time because uh, I would have used it to, did not do anything good. Um, so the some encouragement I did have from my family, even though they don't have that background at all, was if you're going to pick something and go that route, just get into the trades of some sort, a like plumber, electrician, you know. So your parents uh, actually said that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was always my dad's encouragement, even though the guy couldn't, you know. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's got plenty of talents and other stuff, but he's not putting anything to, together. <laughs> so you're fixing things? Yeah, yeah. I mean, not so much at uh at this uh, at this point either because we're at a certain point where like my main focus is on the management side of things and the business side of things uh and and legitimately like i think some people get to a point too where they they say those things but they just want to you know work two days a week and go on vacation and i mean a bunch of the small businesses and people that we work with i I swear half the time i send my email or give them a call it's i'm on vacation i'm on vacation i'm on vacation um you know since i've started the company um i think i've maybe taken like a handful of days off um a lot at the start from 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 being really sick but as far as like actually um taking like pleasure time off i just like my my passion is is the business and you have to have that there when you're um you know trying to be persistent and and grow in a company because you get to a certain point and we're in that i'm in that point now where it's like day after day after day it's just like something and something and something and then something and then you know you ring out a new position who's supposed to help you grow and then they you know start talking all the stuff behind your back and they screw you over and then you you know you're thinking like that's all part of the life yeah, right? yeah. So but when you're, you when you're a young guy like those are you don't always experience those things right away um especially when it's like your company depending on you know what what it is um so experience it in the way of it's uh it's like it's it's your thing um yeah. well, let me ask you this have you had a bad experience yet so far a bad client uh no i haven't had a bad client no not yet right no but you know from speaking to people that one day you are gonna have a bad client oh yeah yeah it's gonna happen oh 100 percent like when yeah, i say a bad client a bad client that might screw you over for a large amount of money yeah i've had i haven't had anybody legitimately in my mind screw me over uh i did have one person really sell me on a story that I don't think you should sell someone to try and uh, scam some money out of them. But it got back to the proposal stage where they sold me on this story basically for uh, months and months and months. And I kept on, cause they were working with the bank to get um, uh, money to base for us to build their place. Oh, but you didn't start construction yet. No, we didn't start construction, but um, so they weren't ready for construction. Mm, they had dealt with some, a different sub, contractor beforehand to get the the site ready so in my mind it was happening uh and just everything that they told me anyway so i spent like months and months and months of revising basically the proposal that they were then sharing with the bank because it had to suit just the amount of money they were making and different choices and um i was but they didn't they didn't want to bring on an interior designer so i was just acting as the interior designer of square footage prices on you know we could use this tile we could use this shower glass i was basically giving them the full thing, but then also revising that for, for ages. Um, and the agreement was like we had talked about, because I knew I had so much time into it that, okay, if we get to a point where it's just not going to go anymore, uh, just pay me the money and and like, we'll part ways for my time into it. Um, anyway, so I was probably, I don't know, I think I probably had like six grand worth of time into it. Um, and then, yeah, they just sent me an email one day and just said, uh, Hey, by the way, we don't remember this conversation. We're not getting to this proposal. And I have it in an agreement too, but what am I going to try to take someone to court over six grand? <laughs> Everyone knows my opinion on that, but it just yeah. it's like, 
you count your blessing that that time was wasted and you learned your lesson and then just move on to the next one yeah. because there is going to be another one. That's just a shitty thing. I know yeah. plenty of seasoned GCs out there that have done really good work and have been in the business for 50 plus years or whatever you, and they're still getting screwed over. It's yeah. just, it's a, it's, it, if it involves a human being, it involves being screwed over. That's just how it works. I've yeah. never seen animals ever screw each other over. Yeah. I just never, I never will. Right. So it's just, um, it happens. It's the, it's the shady part of construction. Yeah. So if you can learn those lessons smaller, sooner, yeah, the better. Yeah. That's all. No, absolutely. I agree with that. That's why I was just trying to figure out. Cause I, in the beginning, you're always trying to be people pleaser. Yeah. And like, you're trying to help. And trust me, I, 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 I got elephant size ideas that I'm yeah, always yeah, come up yeah. with things. And there's been a lot of things that I'm like, you know, what? fuck this. I'm going to keep this idea for another job because I already know where the conversation was going, mm -hmm. but I've given up a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of creativity and not been compensated for it. Mm -hmm. So at some point I got to where I'm like, it's not worth it anymore. Right. Yeah. It's not that I hate construction. I just, I have a um, clear vision of construction. Yeah. So the sooner you younger guys can have a clear vision of construction, the better you will be. Mm -hmm. But I just, no different than when you, I don't know if they still do this in my day when I got my driver's license yeah. way back when, when it was like right after horse carriages, you know, and shit like that, right? <laughs> like they show you this video and they actually explain to you that they tell the entire class, one day you're going to get into an accident. Yeah. Right. And sure enough, yeah, statistically speaking, you are. Yeah. So you are going to get screwed over in construction. It's mm. just a fact. Anybody that's in construction tells me otherwise, your day hasn't come. Yeah. yeah. Simple as that. No, I, I agree with that. We, we Yeah, we've had that on a smaller scale, scale obviously, but, um, yeah. no, I Don't look at it as a negative, honestly, Emerson. Don't look at it as a yeah. negative. Look at it as just as a, a lesson that's attached to it. No different yeah. than you picking up a skill that's attached to some trade that you're working with or working for mm. or working for your, pro your job. Just try to figure out how small that Band-Aid yeah. is going to be. Mm. That's all it is, right? Yeah, for sure. Because a lot of guys have gotten into it, not realized it, and then egos get involved, and all of a sudden their businesses tank as a result of it. And they mm. can't get to that point, right? Because emotions get involved. How yeah. emotional is construction? Yeah. It's very. extremely emotional. Yeah. That's why I keep on saying you're 25 years old. You're dealing with people that are giving you a million dollars plus mm. to do something dream white mm. for them, right? And then all of a sudden things start going south for whatever reason, mm. and and they become victimic, and you become eagle and yeah. all of a sudden it's like well you know f you f you and back and forth and all of a sudden yeah. it gets to that point yeah. right so you're you're 100 right that you should focus on the people skills mm -hmm. and just nurture and try to communicate and how to c continue that communication yeah. that's critical yeah. right absolutely yeah and you want a relationship but right. uh you don't need that relationship to be you know you're texting his friends on the weekend and you know uh, all of those different items because there is going to get to a point it's it's a long relationship between somebody's bill from start to two years later to completing that project through weather, through incidents, through something bad happening, through one of you know your guys getting hurt, through uh, the budget going up, all those different items. If you try to if you try to be too buddy buddy at the start, uh, a I think it comes off as a bit unprofessional, and then b it's gonna everybody's friends until money gets involved. It's a yeah. bad idea. It's eventually yeah. there's always a line drawn. Yeah, yeah. How, like have have your sales pitch in your company in a way to where you provide a better customer service than the other one, but you don't need to cross that line because it's going to, I believe it, it'll end up biting you in the butt in the end. Yeah. How far ahead are you planning your business? Like you've gotten this far right yeah. now. Yeah. What's it going to be like five from now, 10 from now? What's it going to be like when you're an old, when you're my age? Yeah. You yeah. know, what's it going to be like then? Uh, I haven't thought about that yet. No, I, well, I'm always thinking about it, but just, I, I think from when, when I started it to where we are now, like I, I believe I know, I know what the next steps are, what roles need to be filled, uh, you know. And I, I think that I'm just going to basically keep on hightailing it for at least the near future. I'm not really at that point where I don't have an exit strategy. I don't have a, I just want to keep on growing this thing and get into some of those bigger builds, at least for, in my mind, the next five years. I don't um, think you need an exit strategy. Yeah, I think yeah. you need a next step strategy, right? Yeah. Like, it, it, you'll learn this real quick. In mm. construction, you come up with a major problem, mm -hmm. which is a milestone, and you achieve it, and then you're hungry for the next one. Yeah. So it's like, bring it on. I want something new now. And yeah. then you'll come up with the next one. And at some point, you'll be like, 
tapping out i'm done now i'm going to do this yeah that's what that eventually is going to happen so it's For like sure. i can see yourself thinking about those right yeah. so it's like you'll get to that 50 million dollar build or whatever mm. and you'll build that and that'll be an interesting thing but then you're like okay what do i do now yeah yeah i think um n- near future for me is basically like solidifying bread and brothers systems and like the people that we have in place um and so yeah like having that construction manager uh me acting as the pm then eventually getting to a point where uh like we've got we got a bookkeeper and then like a 30 part third party accountant but then at some point you need a controller at some point you either um bring on like a third party service for all of your health and safety for your guys because you'll get screwed for that yep um and then so i think for it's i don't know it's the thing you always see everywhere out there of like you got to replace yourself but um there's a lot more to it than you just have to replace yourself obviously as you know um so n- near future will be those um those few positions being filled and having those systems and communication in place to uh where things are running smoothly uh replacing myself as a pm at some point in the future uh, a couple guys like my brother as they get going as well putting them into uh the construction manager role um to what extent i want to continue that i don't know um, are you still swinging the hammer no so you haven't touched it you're just no. strictly on the sales and customer service and managing a job yeah i'm sitting on uh sitting on site on my laptop or in an office like 16 hours a day so <laughs> just client navigating uh, just one million emails a day and phone calls and then you know managing all your people and the clients and the sub trades um plus trying to grow everything at the same time. So trying to hire people, trying to onboard them. Um, so that's what I've been going through for the, the past basically week now is you got to control all the, all your projects, still play your role, but at the same time for 10 hours a day, you're trying to onboard somebody into their next position, which is like a management position, which is a, a big one. Um, so still while trying to keep tabs on everything and make sure that everyone's happy and doing what they're supposed to and meeting timelines. Um, so I don't, I, I don't have anything down to a science, but <laughs> no, you're never going to learn it, but yeah, it's just yeah. like, so how are you, it's just strictly word of mouth going on right now. As far as our next jobs coming in. Yeah. We're at a point of word of mouth now. Okay. Up until, so you're not advertising. You're not marketing. We still, well, we, we're still active on social media. Um, and, and those items or uh, what's the platform house? Like we're on those, yeah. uh, those different. So we're, we have a social media presence, but at this point we're not, advertising to uh you know let us win your job let us win your job let us you know give us a chance out of houses is another mafia just a different yeah. family that's all it is yeah well because i find it funny that they try to sell you on geotargeting it's a funny yeah. word right yeah so it's like pay us and we'll put you up in yeah. the upper bracket of your area there yeah so then you'll get more views yeah have and you been on house i got approached i did the whole sales pitch yeah and then when I crunched the numbers and I looked at it, I said, no, I'm not interested. And then the salesperson got really pissy with me. Yeah. And I just said, why are you getting upset at me? Yeah. Like I gave you the opportunity to, like I gave you 15 minutes of my time to yeah. listen to your sales pitch. And you just explained to me about your geo-targeting. And I don't, I don't acknowledge it. I don't respect it. I don't care for it. So I'm not interested in moving forward with a monthly, right? And then I've also heard it's very difficult to get out of it once you get into it. Hard. Again, the mafia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, like, in, it, depending on what scale uh, the projects are that you're doing, in my mind, uh, like, you sell one project off of that platform, then it pays for itself. Oh, for 100%. The next, uh, sure. While, in the old, to be honest, one of the only reasons I'm on house is because the more platforms uh, that, like, Bread and Brothers, your company is on, um, like, the higher ranked you are for when you're going to do the Google searches and everything. Um, but do you not agree that it's you walking in and speaking to the prospecting client oh to sell it yeah 100 percent. no no no. that's that's not even a foot in the door that's just an eye on your company and then from there it's you yeah yeah i got it you can only you can have a beautiful website you can have good social media you can do all those things but um yeah once you go to speak to that person especially when you're, you're spending that kind of money um you know if you're within that million dollar range, you know, around that for your project. It, in most cases, or at least in our experience so far, um, like that's people saving their lifetime to, you know, get, get this project done or this renovation done. Um, once you start getting in, well, we're into some, 
some bigger stuff now and some clientele that, um, you know, are on the wealth side quite a bit more successful. But, um, yeah, then you start dealing with people of, you know, you're doing an island pro- an island build for somebody and it's their fourth island and, you know. Mm, I got no interest in that. <laughs> Anything that involves a tool possibly falling out in, into water yeah. or material falling yeah. into water. Yeah. That's, a, that's not even a conversation I want to have, man. Yeah. Yeah, I had a guy come up to me, or an employee come up to me uh, today and he was like, so on this job, like, you know, if my tool falls in, you know, do I replace it or do you? And I said, no, I'll replace it. <laughs> Yeah. Like there's certain jobs that you do, I guess in certain neighborhoods is like, I don't want to have a conversation. Listen, if the crackhead steals my miter saw that I just yeah. bought, yeah. who's going to replace it? Like, that's not a conversation I want to <laughs> yeah. have. Right. If the tool yeah. falls into the lake, who's going to replace it? I don't want to have that conversation. Yeah. Right? Fair enough. It's like, where can I park my vehicle when I'm on job site? Like on solid, stable ground. Yeah. So, I mean, you pose other challenges. I want to ask you, is, is um, what are the Muskokans like? What are they design wise? What's going on up there, man? Is it still shaker? Muskokans like uh, like local people or architects or like what's what, being built what's or? being built up there. I see a lot of modern contemporary. Yeah, it's modern. yeah but yeah. I mean, so it's like, are they still doing shaker up there? Are they like is it, is it still the classic Chantilly lace and crap like that? Uh, <laughs> anything new coming out? I'd say no. From what I see, really? Yeah. What are they doing? It's just all these extremely modern, like the big uh, aluminum panels, um, yeah, all, windows all, and doors. All the, the ACM and stuff like that. Yeah. But what's on inside the house? Mm, well, from what I've seen, I, I'm not a designer, but uh, everything that we've, even projects coming into uh, into our portfolio, uh, what I see, I mean, we obviously follow a ton of builders and architects, is uh, it's all drywall returns. It's all it's going all drywall again. Yeah. yeah. Now, I don't know if that's... I, from what I know, I think that that's here right now. I don't know if that's going to You got drywall continue. returns until you have kids and dogs. Yeah, yeah. Then you get casing. Yeah. I mean, just like I just like construction, what I've learned is there's a function behind construction. Mm. I don't care about designers talking about drywall returns, man, yeah. because they're as brittle as brittle. Like, mm. it's just insane. They'll like if you knock it, chip it, it's done. I yeah. don't care. And then you got to repair it. So I, I'm not a fan. That's not me, but I get it. It goes yeah. with the contemporary. Yeah. I totally understand. It goes with how clean it is, but don't produce kids and don't get a dog. <laughs> like that's, you got to, yeah. it's the same people that are asking for pristine, beautiful, flat, wide plank flooring. Mm-hmm. Well, once your kid scratches the floor, once your dog uses its claws to scratch it, then what? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's, yeah, that's definitely what I've seen. Or even uh, like no crown, no base. Uh, rather no base, you just like have that quarter inch reveal yeah. at the bottom. Oh, yeah. uh, I like hate that one too. All those little things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You ever try to clean a house like that when it's got that reveal on the bottom? That's yeah, where it collects know. all the dirt, right? Yeah. Yeah. I just, whatever. You get older, you start cleaning up everything. You start realizing mm, Wayne Scotty's not a big thing. <laughs> yeah. Like you start discovering certain things that are not practical sometimes. Yeah. And those little inset returns and they're not practical. Yeah. They're going to start to fall apart. But I get it. They look great as mm. a photograph. Yeah, and no, I think it's, I don't know, they're all cool designs, but I didn't, in my opinion, if we if everyone just keeps on designing these rectangles and these boxes and then having them as flat as a surface as possible and as little profile as possible, like, am I... Am I visiting the doctor or am I yeah, coming home? Yeah, like, I, 15, 10 years from now, I think it's going to be like, what the heck was this? I actually yeah. like, uh, I'm trying to remember, Mike, Mike Valchek out of Burlington, uh, building better places fuck i'm sorry mike if I, I totally forget it i'm older and i don't remember everybody that's been on the show but he's actually working on a job right now that i'm really fascinated by because the um the soffit mm. the way the architect designed it it's it's a pitch roof but the soffit comes out almost like a cantilever so the soffit's got a good six or seven feet and he's done it on the front and on the back mm. and it's it's interesting the way it works as a kind of a slight canopy to the exterior elements of the house mm. and it looks visually very stunning and I'm like, I like that. I actually, yeah. As soon as I saw it, I just left a comment. I said, Mike, I like that a lot. Like, that's clever yeah. to me. It's functional, but still aesthetically pleasing. Yeah, that's sharp. I'd, yeah. have, I'd have to see kind of what it Better like building that, yeah. places, I think, is his okay. handle. But Mike, yeah, Valchak, he's been on the show before. Nice. But I just like, I, I, I get what he's saying. It's like, I mean, how many times do we have to keep on building the exact same? And you'll go through yeah. this. Yeah. You'll have your same conversation about this and ACM that and, and then oh, I got to be careful about it because we have a couple of leads right now that are pretty strong. With, they want that style. Well, so let them. That's fine. It's not, and I've always said to clients, yeah. I go, listen, it's not my house, man. Yeah. But the moment that you go, what do you think, Manny? Yeah. 
do you really want me to answer that? Because I'm going to piss you off, or I'm going to piss your significant other off, or I'm going to—I'm just going to explain to you. Yeah. But I'm—I'm I'm a traditionalist. Like I—I I can go to Europe and see something that's distressed and aged or whatever, and still functional and still beautiful for me, right? That's how I look at it. So it—it's not what's being built here. I'm not a fan of North American construction because I don't think a lot of clients take risks. Yeah. I think they're trying to be safe and they're trying to post the pitches of their jobs mm. to please their friends. Yeah. Well, even the assembly of, um, I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but from what I, you know, kind of research and see on YouTube and, and uh, kind of watching little documentaries on, on all these things, like we seem to be quite behind in terms of uh, like actual you're, building systems. You're not wrong. Yeah, and so it's it's interesting the further you look into those things. Um, Why aren't we building better? Yeah, which is, I mean, obviously, tons of podcasts are basically all based around that now of you know building better homes and. Um, but it's the, the reason it's such a big conversation is because it's true. Is that, well, especially with two of how much money a home costs, like let alone a, a, some sort of big custom cottage, like just your, you know. You but we have the whole world at our hands, right? Yeah. So you start, okay, like I'll give you an example. I just recently came across because occasionally I feed, I, I'll just look at TikTok or Instagram. I like, like TikTok more than I do Instagram, mm -hmm. right? I don't care if the Chinese are paying attention to what I'm looking at <laughs> because I just block whatever I don't lock, right? Yeah, like yeah. what I don't like. So that if something comes up, I block it. But I was actually fascinated by um, these guys building an exterior facade out of clay red brick mm -hmm. on a vertical element 3D. And this was going on in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. And I was watching the way this, this man was doing it where... The guy is so dark from his skin, like just sun and exposure and just mm -hmm. being out there. Um, and he's just building it in, in, and I'm in awe on how he's doing it, right? And it's just, it's a really interesting technique where it's like you're seeing a classic, it, I, in my opinion, it's a classic Toronto red brick, mm -hmm. right? So classic two and an eighth, eight inch long, uh, um, no, no holes, just the, um, I'm trying to remember, and all the bricklayers are going to fucking freak out now. I'm trying to remember the, the name of the brick. That's a classic Toronto one. But they're taking that brick yeah. and they're going vertical with it. And then they're taking some of the bricks and they're cutting it on a, a, an angle. Mm. And then they're mixing it in with all the other verticals. So then when they put it all together, every few courses, they take a grinder and they cut a channel through the top of it. And then they embed a steel rod and then they put epoxy into it to hold it. So now it's structurally sound mm. and they keep on growing it. And when they're finished with it, the way the sun hits it, yeah. it just becomes a really fascinating version of a new type of cladding. It's still brick. If you think about it, it's mm. still laying bricks, but it's done differently. Mm. That, in my opinion, is fascinating. I'd yeah. love to see that here in Canada, but people don't take that risk. Yeah. So it says, I, I'm fascinated by any trace person that takes something that's already been used so many w different ways, mm -hmm. and then they come up with a new way to use it, Yeah, right? It'll never happen with glass block because glass block is stuck in the 80s, and mm -hmm. I don't ever want to see glass block ever again in my yeah, life, right? Hospital, I can't yeah. yeah, exactly. I yeah. can't stand glass block. But I, I'm fascinated by those things. I like seeing new ideas of new materials, people using new ideas, and then there, there's these old school guys that are coming up with mm -hmm. new ways to install them. Mm. that's what i like and nobody's taking those risks yeah that's cool yeah yeah that's why so it's just like yeah clients can continue doing those same kind of i find them very cold mm. and i think that and i've shared this on the show you come home you should be it should be a feeling mm. it shouldn't be a visual it should be a feeling when you walk into your home you should feel a certain way yeah not see a certain way Mm. Especially when Stevie Wonder gets home, he feels differently when he goes into his house. Yeah. It's a feeling that you need in that house, not a visual. Yeah. So I don't care about drywall returns. I don't care about white slabs. I don't care about shaker. I don't care about any of that mm. shit. It's how I feel in that house. Yeah, there's got to be functionality to it for sure. I think that, well, most of that's coming down to the architect at the end of the day who's designing the place for him. Um, but that's an uphill challenge because they can design certain things that they don't know how to build and then they're expecting you yeah, I have to figure that out. Yeah, I, three quarters of the clients we get coming to us with the drawings already. Um, I say, has the architect ever seen the site? Have they ever they're like, oh no, 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 no. Like, well, we want to put this here. And I'm like, well, I'm like, we, can't, we, you know, I don't even know if we can put that there, or if you want to spend three hundred thousand dollars blasting out rock. And they're like, well, they're like, well, what's blasting there? What is uh? And it's like, why? Well, yeah, I don't know what to, what those conversations were like then. You've had conversations like that, like the architects uh, weren't that. I've had one that that one, that what I just said there is yeah one one specific one yeah 
<laughs> Those are entertaining, man. That's yeah. all it is. It's just I've, I've had so many interesting conversations with clients and stuff. So, mm. and I mean, it. Uh, there's obviously different tiers to the way an architect prices too. So maybe the client just said, "Hey, give me your cheapest option." Like I just want some sort of good preliminary drawing or something like that. I uh, never understood the one the the certain architects that charge ten percent of the construction budget. Yeah, I don't. You, have have you come across those? No. Not There's yet. a lot of those in Toronto. Yeah. A lot of those in Toronto. So, I mean, you build in a million-dollar house, architect fees are $100,000. Is the architect the one determining how much the place is? Yeah. He or she don't care. She's making 10 or he's yeah, making yeah. 10% of whatever the construction is. But they've drawn something. Like, I, I have yet to see drawings from an architect that don't require more explanation from the builder. Mm. So, the architect sold it to the client. The client has paid the hundred grand. Now you're responsible to build it, but ten percent. That's uh, that's that's huge. That's standard in Toronto. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know too much about the Toronto yeah. building market, but yeah, I I think it's greedy. That's yeah. what I think it is. It's just greediness. But so be it. It's mm -hmm. fine. Mm -hmm. Tune in next week when I'll have an architect on the show from Toronto. Oh yeah, yeah. You have one on? <laughs> no, oh, no, no, no. Yeah. They're shy. They don't want to be on the mic because nobody wants to be asked like direct questions, right? So, yeah. and then yeah. you got to answer the question, and all of a sudden they're like, "Oh, I didn't mean to say that." Whatever. <laughs> I've had two architects on the show. Okay. Yeah. And they've been very, very reserved mm -hmm. because I want to pick their brain. Yeah, that's all it is, right? So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. We're getting close to the end, man. Sure. Anything else you want to share, bro? Um. We had a spectator, Beyonce. Well, I'm yeah, curious I, about what your house is going to look like. Uh, well, right now it's it's nothing special. I mean, I just no, but your yeah. dream home because eventually you're a GC, you're a builder, so eventually you're going to build your house, yeah. which is always a fascinating like experiment because now you are the builder, yeah. and, and I've seen plenty of builders build their dream home, and they make all the same stupid mix, mistakes that we've told clients don't make. Yeah, yeah, well, they just I, do I, it. I, I can see it happening for sure. Yeah. Um, Style wise, um, I like the popular Scandinavian style going on, but I like that. Not to, not like to the. I feel like it's quite minimal that style. You uh, gotta add some warmth, from what I know. Yeah, yeah, you gotta add some warmth. But so I don't actually know what the style is, but it's basically Scandinavian style, but it still incorporates like some really nice red brick or like stone on the outside with the dark windows and all that. Um, I got thousands of photos on there of kind of what I'm talking about, but I don't actually know what that specific style is is called. But Scandinavian kind of yeah, people figure it out. Yeah, it would go that route. And then it's hard to explain it to Americans. Yeah, they won't know what that means. <laughs> Sorry, but they won't. <laughs> yeah, I'm not too sure. No, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. I totally. Yeah, I've had plenty of conversations where I've gone to Europe and I've spoken to people from Finland, Sweden, and stuff like that, and yeah. you start talking about how they design certain things, and it's just it's fascinating mm -hmm. the way it works, right? The only thing is when I talk to them, I always say, "Bring in a little bit of color, please, just yeah. a tiny bit. Lots of white oak. I love the white oak. Yeah. Bring in a little bit of color. Yeah, no, yeah. those those faint whites and the <laughs> light beiges and everything is everything. It's yeah. nice, but it's it's it actually works better." in smaller rooms mm -hmm. right so it, it makes them look bigger at the end of the day yeah but it, it looks weird in a large open space mm -hmm. it, to me it does mm -hmm. but it's nice i like that yeah. i like yeah. that style so that's yeah. good yeah for sure um yeah to your point there getting married in, in august so next that's, uh, this, this, year, yeah, this yeah, like a few, this, few weeks this month few weeks yeah <laughs> i don't even know if it's a few weeks i don't know yeah yeah no we're recording now so it's gonna be like a month that before it gets on the on posted or whatever yeah, so, so you, you guys will probably be married yeah, by then at that point yeah yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah so how are you gonna take how are you gonna take the break from construction because obviously you're gonna have to take a break yeah well i think like muskoka is so nice in the summer so we thought it was a waste of money to do a honeymoon in the summer up there um so like i said i've never really taken a break at all from the the company since i started it um so i don't know we'll probably just wait till the winter and probably end up doing your typical couple of weeks or how's something. he gonna take a break as long as i have wi-fi like, yeah, so. <laughs> listen yeah. you got to listen to some of the shows where i talk about is not all about the construction life there's, yeah, there's yeah. something to do with the personal life right that's and why i'm getting married and well you got to disconnect <laughs> You got to disconnect, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, for sure. You know what? You, and I've even seen that 
within the last little while just of the the stress that comes along with well a construction and trying to grow a company um when you're legitimately doing it so but you just you don't you're not betting benefiting anybody around you or yourself or the company by um not taking any time to try and somewhat reset just I, recharge your yeah, batteries. And I say that very lightly because I, I've always been the one to be like, you know, what do you mean reset? What do you mean burn out? Like, what do you, you know, you're trying to grow a company just, you know. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Take, a, take a break and just recharge. You know what? Go away. Yeah. I, I guarantee you something else is going to spark. Yeah. So it's like you'll you'll be motivated to bring back some new ideas at that point. Yeah. You'll Like you'll get stuck in a tunnel vision thing. Mm-hmm with construction right so that's if that if that's what you want to do that's fine go ahead mm. and do it i mm. couldn't do that because i started button heads with people right mm. so it's like i was having conversations with clients about everything that was being built same mm. and i just be like i can't do this i can't have this conversation i just had this conversation i'm having deja vu in my yeah. life right now i don't want this I, I don't care about it yeah. anymore yeah so you walk away from projects so it's like if you take a break you bring new ideas to the table mm. simple as that right that happens naturally yeah Oh, absolutely. So take the break. Whether it's a week, whatever, just shut off your phone and shut off everything and yeah. let somebody else take care of the job. So hopefully things don't <laughs> go bad. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But that's why you've got your crew, your sub crew and everybody else, right? Yeah. We're, we're, we're def- well, that's the thing, too, is like uh, we're at a point where I, I could say, hey, you know, guys, I'll be back in a few weeks or I'll be back in a... And, oh, I ain't know, saying a few weeks. And I'm things will go that. well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like a week or two, yeah, right? A couple of weeks. I think a couple of weeks is normal, no? For your honeymoon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For a, I don't know. I've never been married, so I don't uh, know. You know? I don't know what the rules are. No. There's rules. That's why I don't know them. Yeah. <laughs> so it's as simple as that, right? Yeah. You guys that want to get married, good luck. Yeah. That's all. Like, wish you the best. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we'll, fight, we'll make it work. Yeah. <laughs> Not a lot of young people getting married these days. No. Or is that, am I wrong on that? No, you're very, very right. Yeah, a lot of old people getting divorced. Yeah, that's also very true. <laughs> yeah, those those stats are high. But congratulations, yeah. all the best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You ready to do the twelve questions? Sure. I don't. Yeah, I think I kind of remember what I put there. No, I, well, there's no. It's not right or yeah, wrong, right? Yeah. So, yeah, Bread and Brothers. Uh, Emerson's here. Insta is Bread and Brothers, and cell phone is seven zero five five seven one seven three seven three. Website is triple w Bread and Brothers. The other brothers ever going to get into it? Uh, the other the other ones outside of it right now. No, they're not interested in doing it. No. What do they do for a living? Uh, older brother, he's. Uh, I forget what the role is called. Called, but um, he's basically one of the guys who has three spreadsheets in front of them and calculates uh, what a company's worth, like when they're trying to raise money or sell or something. Okay. Yeah, so that's what he does. Venture analyst or something like that? I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so he's out of Toronto. And then uh, youngest brother, uh, he's uh, he's 11. So he's just doing his thing. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's adopted. Your son yeah. or your brother? Like oh, yeah. 11? Yeah. Yeah. There's a big gap there? Yeah, he's, he's adopted. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> It's a big gap, but it's yeah. kind of good. And you guys can all kind of educate them. Yeah, for sure. On. Yeah, yeah. My, my, yeah. I, my parents like it. I don't know. Their their life has kind of been their their kids. So I think that once we kind of all took off, they honestly didn't even know what to do. So <laughs> they're like, well, okay, well, I guess we'll find some some other kid. <laughs> for them, man. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what is your favorite construction word? Uh, done. What's your least favorite <laughs> construction word? Uh, yeah. You ever get those guys where it's like you're talking to them on the phone and you're trying to explain something or, you know, something actually needs to get done. It's just, yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, okay, what, you know, what did I, what did I say? Or how are you going to do that? Do what? You know, it's, but it, <laughs> well, you just said, yeah. Yeah, you know, my biggest pet peeve is when you're, um, you know, you're not actually at least trying to, to listen to that person. You just, it's like, well, what, what do I even call you for? Then I'll, I'll get somebody else to do it. What turns you on in construction? Mm. Getting to the end of a project um, and walking away with a, with a good review. Yeah. What turns you off in construction? Besides a bad review, I guess. Um, you ever get one of those? No, not yet. I'm sure it'll happen at some point. Just ignore it. <laughs> yeah. Um, what turns me off? Probably... Um, to your point of saying kind of those those conversations, am I supposed to answer these really quick? No. Oh, okay. You take as long as you All want, right. man. <laughs> to your point that you were saying before of uh, uh, just 
as you started to get out of things, you kept on having those conversations with certain people that were kind of bringing you back into those topics and conversations you didn't like while you were in. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Um, but anyways, a big part of that, which I've learned too, is just your typical, oh, it's this guy's fault, it's this guy's fault, or oh, they didn't do their job right, this isn't done right, this looks like terrible, I'd never do it like this, they took way too long, they were over budget, like, you know, all those, th- it's, uh, I think that's what gets exhausting, is that people want to just show up and... Um, just do it, just do the prop. Yeah, or job. just, yeah, so I, I think there's a big, like, mental side to that as well, too, and then plus when you're around other guys who are all doing it, then you kind of start to do it, so that's a big thing that I've tried to... Uh, and still with us is like there's no you know you guys can go work for someone else if you if you want i'll keep talking like that like i don't i don't really care there's no there's no point of it it's going to make your life miserable uh the client's going to pay for it i'm going to pay for it uh if you're not you know getting fired you're going to go quit because you're so miserable of talking negative all the time um yeah i agree i don't like that so i guess yeah that'd be my biggest my biggest pet peeve is you know what do you what do you even why are you even a carpenter then why are you even uh uh you know doing what you're doing because you get you can make good money being being a carpenter, so uh, especially especially now. I th- I don't know what it was when I was working for that other company there. I was making eighteen bucks an hour, so that's no money. But uh, I mean, you can have a few years' experience and walk up to anybody these days and say, hey, "I want thirty bucks an hour or something." Yeah, not with me. <laughs> uh, what's your favorite curse word? Uh, well, I don't know. I don't like. I, you don't swear. You don't have to swear if you don't want to yeah. swear. Oh no, I, I'm not gonna lie and say that uh, that I don't, but. Um, yeah, like my my faith is a big part of kind of how I navigate everyday life as well. Um, so I just don't think it'd be the best example of don't myself don't, or the company. Don't, don't, yeah. don't worry about it. <laughs> What's your favorite vehicle? Uh, you ever heard of a Pagani? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't know how to say it. it's called like the Hawara or something. Well, like I know you're trying to talk about. Yeah, 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 I'm so. not a fan of it. I just don't like aesthetically. No. I don't. I don't know yeah, something yeah. about it. It's. I, yeah. I know the person who designed it. I get the the yeah. car and everything like that. Yeah. It's just aesthetically, it still doesn't connect yeah. me, right? Yeah, if, you're t- if you're talking like kind of ultimate car, ultimate supercar, then I I would probably say that one. Yeah. What's your least favorite vehicle? Mm, I don't know if I have one now for this. I'm not. I'm not a huge fan of Teslas, to be honest. Now, not because, like, oh, I'm some trades guy and I hate electric cars and all no, that stuff. No, there's been like, a lot of hate for Teslas lately, yeah, that's man. A, I have nothing to do with it. Yeah, that, well, <laughs> that's obviously the way that everything's going to be going. Um, no. So, you don't think so? No. The le- no? No. Okay. I will never own an EV. Mm-hmm. I will die driving combustible engine mm-hmm. motorcycles and cars. Well, maybe you. But I, think I still that, got 50 years, man. Yeah, yeah. So it's just like, that ain't fucking happening yeah. in my life. Well, I, right? it's, I don't think it's going to happen for me either. But I just think that, like, in a whole, that's way that everything that's been trying to be pushed. Now, obviously, then there's the argument of, you know, okay, we can push electrical, everything, but nothing about the grid is actually set up to, to power that Good much. Good luck on Toronto. Yeah. Toronto can't even sustain the way it is right now. Yeah, so I don't... And the management behind Toronto is yeah. absolutely horrendous. Yeah. So good luck on that. It's never going to happen. Yeah. You're going to get neighbors... You're going to get neighbors, you're going to get homeowners that won't be allowed to use their, uh, can we use the AC or can we drive our car? Yeah. I'm going to get in my car and drive yeah. and leave my house that's AC'd. Yeah. That's, well, yeah, like this one project we're doing right now, we had, we're, uh, we upgraded the whole thing to a 400 amp, um, which I mean. That's fun. Yeah. Yeah. So I, anyways, because he, wa- he wants two EVs. Uh, <laughs> he's got a boathouse. He's got, you know, the cottage he wants. So, yeah. all right. Are they making electric boats? Yeah. They're making electric boats now. Yep. I want to be driving them. an electric boat in a there's puddle. A, there's a few of them. Uh, in water. In Muskoka. There's a few, like, advertising companies up there that, I don't know if they have them or they just, you know, whoever, get, but they're. I got this vision of a radio going inside a bathtub. Like, <laughs> I don't understand why you want an electric boat in a pond, like a lake. Yeah. I don't yeah. Well, that. I'm sure they've thought of that. So. <laughs> yeah. They're kind of cool. I don't know. You might, yeah. They're kind of cool. Listen, man, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I've got my favorite cars, and there's something to do with rumble. Like, yeah. there's, there's some, like a combustible yeah, big, engine, big cigar boats or something. Yeah, yeah. it's just like whatever. I don't give yeah. a shit about. Yeah. There's plenty of trees, and somebody go hug them. I don't care. What construction <laughs> sound or noise do you love? You figure that I would memorize these by now, eh, Angelina? Like, I've done how many shows, and I would have these memorized, and I don't have them memorized. Sorry. No, oh, that's all right. <laughs> um, construction sound or noise do you love? I don't know, and the sirens go off and you're, you're blasting bedrock. It's pretty good, pretty nice thud. When the sirens go off? Right? Yeah, because you got a, you gotta, like, a 
alarm the sirens or like oh okay all right I yeah you gotta blow all the sirens before oh yeah, yeah okay okay yeah, I thought sorry. It was something that happened sorry sorry or air, uh, air horns whatever you want yeah, yeah yeah maybe i shouldn't have said that yeah. what construction sound noise do you hate um when people are trying to uh put 400 pounds behind shoving a piece of wood through a table saw and you're just grinding the whole thing out yeah <laughs> and it starts pinching yeah and it's wet yeah and the saw just screaming yeah, then I mean, at, at some point too, then it catches and you, uh, you know, then you end up in the hospital. But then you try to do the geometric science behind where that board is going to go when it does go, <laughs> and hopefully it doesn't hit you or anybody else. Yeah, I know, I've been yeah. there. What profession other than your own would you like to attempt one day? Um, I mean, I guess it's kind of within the same wheelhouse, but uh, be cool, like on the commercial development side of things, to. Um, at some point get into developing like you kind of got the piece of farmland and you're developing um big commercial places that are going to get leased out or like condos or something like that i mean that's a whole whole other ball game from from what i know about it and kind of what i've looked into it and people i know who are in it but um wow you're just going into every kind of mafia eh? yeah yeah yeah. you're gonna be i mean there's a lot of big players in there right well i and those big players don't like little fish coming into that pond. Yeah, but I do think there's even, there's opportunity for it, and I do think it's I think it's completely different from custom residential lakeside. Oh yeah, for cottage. sure, for sure. Like I don't think, yeah, you're, I think there's only a certain checklist that you're kind of concerned about, um, and in that instance, if there wasn't necessarily a huge like personal side to the company, then by all means, if I go at it for you know five years, and then one of these big players want to say hey we're gonna buy you out it's fine with me on the custom residential side of things i don't want to do that like i'd like to keep this around for like to be a generational thing uh and still have that personal like service aspect to it um because obviously as as things go on and things become less and less personal uh, i just see it as an opportunity uh, especially as fewer and fewer young people are getting into the industry uh like people want to bitch and moan and talk about it um but i just I don't know, I see that as a pretty good opportunity for myself and uh, guys who want to come and help grow the company, and I'm more than happy to give those people a portion of the company to keep it going, too. I mean, all the best. Yeah. I mean, I, I know that I, I know a few young guys that have been pushed out because of it, right? Mm-hmm. So it's just like it was easier to push them out than to buy them out. Yeah. That's the unfortunate thing, right? So there's still that stereotype, and that's why I just revert back to the mafia word. So, but I mean, all the best to you. Yeah, if you, it's just what, I'm just trying to. <laughs> it's still there. It doesn't matter if it's not front and center, but it's still there. What yeah. profession would you not like to do? If I was like a factory worker, you know, where you're inside all day and you're staring at the same thing, well, like one of those button pushing jobs where you just, yeah, I think I'd yeah, ballistic. Mm-hmm. Last question: If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at those pearly gates? Um. You uh, you tried your best, I guess. Yeah, I'd hate, I'd hate the one of the things w- that would keep me up is uh, just like going after something that uh, I know. Well, I, going after something I know that I can like do and achieve, uh, but then being that person who's uh, basically not going to actually try and attack that or um, have the the stamina or determination to actually come up with a game plan of you know what you're. Um, what you're looking at achieving so i don't know if that makes any sense i know you get it i, I, yeah. I, I get an idea of where you're getting at yeah yeah cool man emerson thanks so much for being on the show man thanks for having me man i appreciate it yeah it's a good chat yeah absolutely I, i'm just saying that it's unfortunate trust me i got the same thing mm. when i was first getting started i would just ask a bunch of questions right mm. i would just kind of kill them with humor and just yeah. screw around and then i i think i used my Portuguese heritage, knowing that I can connect with certain people from Europe. Yeah. And I would just use that as an angle. Yeah. But then once I got in, I used the photographs of whatever I had of whatever work I was doing with new ideas. And I would Mm. show it to those old school guys that were just grumpy. Mm. And then once they saw the photographs and they would look at me and they're like, you did this. And I'm like, yeah, "Yeah." then there was, yeah, Yeah, exactly. Then there was like, okay, so you're one of us at that point. Right. So I would just encourage you definitely to just continue speaking to as many old idiots that are yeah. in this industry yeah. to get as much knowledge from them as possible uh, because they still have something to share. Oh, for sure. Right. They, they've learned their lessons and it's a different construction world nowadays, mm. but um, they can still contribute 
to the new world today of what you guys are doing, but you guys are taking it to a whole other level and stuff mm. like that. But just prepare for the the falls because there yeah. are going to be falls. I yeah. guarantee you they're going to be falls. Yeah. Right. So it's just uh, like I said earlier, just um, try to figure out how you can make those falls as small as possible. Mm. And then always learn from each one because yeah. you're going to learn from the new ones. You're going to learn from the good ones and the things that happen and it gets you to the next level. And then hopefully you get to that condo development and go through that whole world that's a whole other world that i had yeah no i don't i don't anyway yeah, i don't know maybe i'm not even going necessarily to the the condo route but um, no it's great to do that or even the, if you did a subdivision with luxury townhomes or something like that yeah you, like you kind of start building yeah. more units for more people right yeah there's guys up there doing like the the real high-end spec builds or they're doing a spec build and selling it for eight million dollars something like that um a lot of risk yeah, huge, spec build. yeah, huge risk. Well, especially when you're into it um, for for that amount. I mean, obviously, there's more reward at the end with your margins at the end. But I just don't. Uh, it's funny with the economy that's going on right now. Yeah, I th- at the end of the day, everyone needs somewhere to live. Uh, yeah. At the end of the day, there's uh, you know at least for the near future, just depending on what you're into thinking about with conspiracies and all that. But there's uh, you know we're gonna have more and more people coming in at least for the the, the near future, and they need a spot to live. Uh, nobody can afford to live anywhere that's working a normal job. Um, so not on a on a greedy angle, but I think there could definitely be a, a large service to that as well. Um, of just doing like the low income housing and throwing up these big apartment buildings that are actually giving people a place to live uh, that they can actually still work a normal job to, you know, afford the rent on. Uh, I mean, obviously, the prices need to be the price. There's people out there complaining about, you know, I can't find anywhere. This is so much. This is so much. And it's like, well, you, you know, you're also spending $400 a week at the LCBO and you're, you know, smoking $150, $150 of the cigarettes every day. So, yeah, totally, right? So Yeah, yeah. Or buying some car you can't afford or buy, you know, whatever. So. Cool. Thanks very much. Appreciate it. Uh, we're out of here, Angelina.